My name is Luke Brunin. I'm a Portland Winterhawks prospect, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. I'm Carson Dix. I'm a Portland Winterhawk prospect, and I'm on the podcast I Only Touch Greatness. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. You. Turn it up. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Hey, we're rocking. So both of you were born in Warman, Saskatchewan, if I said that right. Yeah. Uh, what was childhood like for you growing up, and uh, when did you start playing hockey? Well, we both started playing hockey like when we were four years old, and Warman's kind of a hockey community, so we developed it pretty early. I think we've played together the last 10 years. There's only 13,000 people in Warman, so we've been on the team the last like 10 years, so... It's pretty crazy growing up in Warman, just surrounded by little kids at the rink and being a role model for all of them is pretty sweet. Any pros come out of there? Mm-hmm. Not yet. Not not no. yet, but we have there's a bunch of guys playing in the dub right now and a couple of guys playing NCAA. Okay. And there's no one there's no one in the NHL right now though. Okay. Carson, how about you? How was your childhood growing up? Yeah, like Luke said, I've been playing with him for a while now. Um, well, even today, I came back from the gym, and there's kids asking me like for autographs, asking, like, are you from Mormon AAA? Like, I love it here. It's, I know, it's, it's the best. Hey, you guys play any other sports? I played lacrosse for a little bit, but that was that was really it no i don't didn't have time for it anymore so i had to quit i was pretty good at it too so it was kind of hard dropping it but okay and then i played soccer softball and lacrosse okay and uh what are some of your short term goals like what are you trying to accomplish in the next year or so well i think i can speak on both of us here obviously next year play in Portland together would be pretty sweet and we're hosting the Western Regionals in Warman this year so it'd be nice to win that too in front of our home crowd so okay pretty sweet. good one okay um what's one aspect of your game you're both looking to improve Are you one? um Honestly, I want to say my defensive zone. I still need to work on that. That's been one of my tougher areas. And, of course, getting bigger as I'm only about six feet. So, 
got to get more mass on me and get bigger and just, yeah, got to work for it. Okay. Oh, man, I, I got to work on my rebound control a little bit. Obviously, just all working on all the little things like playing the puck and the mental side of the game and all that kind of stuff. We got to hone in on the little details every practice you can. So that's really it. And then obviously putting on more weight. I weigh quite a bit, but I want to put on more muscle and more, more mass to me. So, okay. And uh, so Luke, second round draft pick of the, of the winter Hawks, of course, uh, 2021, um, your second whole second highest goalie to ever be drafted is what I found. One of those stats. Uh, how does that feel? And where were you on draft day when you, your name got called? Well, I was I, I was at my house here in Warman, and I didn't go to school that day because like I I knew I was going in the second round or the third, so I kind of I stayed home from school because I didn't want my phone to blow up when I was in class. But no, I I didn't know where I was going, and I thought I was going to go to the Blades at thirty four. I never did, but then. Portland texted my agent and said, yeah, we're picking you. So be ready. And it was, it was pretty cool. Like, especially going down there last January, being able to see it, being able to be around the guys, it was unreal. And obviously being down there for a month, a month ago was pretty sweet too. Yeah. And Carson, six rounds, same draft year. Uh, where, where were you when you got picked? Um, I just got home. My friends dropped me off from school, and I sit on my couch. My dad comes home. He's like, it's going to come. It's going to come. And then all of a sudden, phone starts blowing up. All friends are texting me. You got drafted. I'm like, by who? Portland. And I'm like, no way. That's me and Luke. <laughs> and then like five minutes later, Luke calls me. He's like, congratulations. We're on the same team. This is me. Awesome. So that was really unique. Yeah, it was, that was pretty cool. Okay. That's sweet. Um. Okay, uh, so Luke, you were at the U seventeen camp. Uh, how did that prepare you for this season? Oh, it was unreal experience. Like just the professionalism down there was it was pretty cool, and being able to play against the top end guys was good experience. And I, I did good. I was disappointed when I didn't get picked for the tournament, but it is what it is, and got to move forward from it. But no, it really pushed me to be better for this coming up year and the facing that adversity has kind of made me realize that I got to put more work in more working in the gym and on the ice, mental game, school, whatever it was. That's just it. You gave me the tip off last week about uh, not, not, not going down that road of talking about the U 17s, but the, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, some things happen for a reason and then you, yeah. you can work, you can work to overcome those. And that's hopefully what you guys are going to both do. Carson, yeah, I didn't exactly. find any stats on you for that. Um, were you at camp? Or? Nope. Uh, no, I was not at the U17 camp. Okay. Um, did you guys get into any preseason games? Not, not in yeah, we, yeah we, both, we both played. I got into three. And I think you how many I played? went into four, and I had an assist in the last game. Okay. So what's it like going out there, and you, how do you calm the butterflies? Oh, it was it wasn't it wasn't bad. Like I kind of being down there for like training camp, and the first day I got down there, I was pretty nervous. But I think I turned that nervousness into excitement, and I just was super excited to be down there. And then I we knew that we were going to stay for exhibition because we were both signed already. So when we were able to play some exhibition games, like we played in Everett the one game, and they had Zellweger. Berezowski and Hofer all playing. Like they had all their top end guys playing. So it was pretty cool to play against those guys, get a taste of what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know. For me, it felt like I was like in a fog. It was like, holy, this is actually happening. Like a dream come true. I'm playing the WHL. So it was really neat there. And I don't know. Yeah. Seeing those top guys, it was, it was a wide opening for me. Yeah. 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 For sure. That, I mean, Selwyn was nuts. Oh, he's unreal. He controlled <laughs> yeah. the puck. He controlled the puck so well, and his, his skating was unbelievable. I think he had five shots to me and didn't score, so I'm pretty proud of that. When you get your first win, Luke, who's who's getting your puck? I don't know. I think I'll have to bring it back home. Maybe put it in a little case or something like that. Give it to my parents. Put it out 
somewhere. I will. I don't want to keep it just laying around. I'd like to put it somewhere nice so I can display it. Okay, and Carson, when you get your first goal, what, what, what um, are you doing with it? I'll probably give it to one of my parents, probably my mom, because, I don't know, she's been my biggest supporter, and she's always, like, telling me it's going to come, it's going to come. So, yeah, I'll probably give it to her. Okay. Uh, what are some of your hobbies outside of hockey right now? Well, we both trained together all summer. Um, we Dicker worked at the golf course, so yeah. we were pretty lucky to be able to drive around carts, and we'd go out late after the tee times and stuff like that. Like, memberships here in Warmer are pretty cheap, and we have a super nice course. We both live right beside it, so drive to the course, do a quick nine after hours, and just that's really it. Then summer f- flew by for both of us. So Okay. Did, Luke, did you manage to get any training in with Andy Moat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I was down in Portland for January, they weren't playing any games. But for that week I was down there, they had Andy Moog was out there. So I got to train with him a little bit. And then he was at training camp in September again. So I got to chat with him a little bit. And then I've been the la- last week, I had a call with him and he kind of ran me through a couple things and like just talked to me about my game, things I need to work on, things I've been doing well stuff like that so and he's a great guy too like it's unbelievable to work with him he's just so humble and you never you never would have guessed that that guy has five stanley cups and was an unreal candy back in the day yeah exactly i i was wondering do you think he travels with the team he well he lives he lives in texas so oh. he's because that's where he last played was Dallas. So he stayed there. He's got family down there now. But he, he commutes back and forth from Texas to Portland. I think he flies around. So, Oh, okay. Yeah, I was seeing if I was ever running into him here in Vancouver. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite road barn? Well, playing in Saskatchewan, like, our, we have 12 AAA teams here, and all the ranks are pretty nice, but – like our the Legends Center where we play is unreal. Like it has, it's the best atmosphere for this ever. And it's like in playoffs last year it was absolutely crazy. But I think either playing in Notre Dame, like Wilcox, they have like the students there, so they usually fill up the student section for our games. It's pretty cool. And also playing in Estevan, they have like a fresh rink down there, and it's super new. And then Moose Jaw's got a nice barn too. Oh yeah. Yeah, mine would be Moose Shaw or Esteban. Esteban's got a brand new ring, so like Luke said, it's it's really cool. Uh, what do you think makes a good athlete? I think it's it's a it's obviously being able to be athletic and being in shape, but then I also think it's work ethic and being able to be a leader in your own way and doing whatever you can to help out your team. Like there's not one definition, there's not two definitions, there's about a million definitions of an athlete, so Yeah, and I'd probably say commitment, uh, yeah, hardworking, dedicated, do anything to win. I don't know. Athletic, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So if a GM or scout were to ask, or my Vancouver Canucks, what do you bring to my team? Uh, I bring size, confidence. I'm a leader. I like to be a leader by example. I'm a, I'm a good role model for younger kids, and I think that – I can win games with my confidence and kind of give my team a boost when I can. Uh, me, I'd probably say I'm hardworking, a uh, leader on the ice and off. Uh, I, I'm fast. I'll put the puck in the net for you, and yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us about your most successful year of hockey. Uh, probably last year. Uh, we went, we, it was our – second year in the league as a franchise and we built a good team. We had a bunch of older guys. I had good stats and lot, played quite a few games. So it was pretty fun. Then in playoffs, we ended up going to the provincial final and we ended up losing, but no, it was an unreal experience. Okay. Yeah. And last year and probably our PB second year when we won provincials, oh, yeah. uh, we had maybe, Eight losses that total season. We had 49 wins and one tie, and we ended up winning our league's league championship by one goal with a minute or like 53 seconds left in the period. And then we go on to win provincial champions against Prairie Storm. Yeah. Okay. So that was fun. So, how did Portland help you guys get uh, 
I don't know the right word, but the they how they take you under your wing and take care of you guys. Oh, the vets, the vets that are unreal. Like, while well, I was paired up with Dawson Pasternak, and he drove me everywhere, and he kind of taught me the ropes and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. And obviously, being around the older guys, you you understand the maturity level that you have to have to be there, and the amount of professionalism that you have to have to play in such a prestigious organization. Yeah, and I think the Billet families really helped too. They made you really comfortable, and you felt like it was home. So you, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was okay. fun. Yeah, I bet it sounds like. It. Um, how did COVID ex- expect, or how did COVID affect your development? Well, we had one year where we played. I think it was our second year of U15. We played <sighs> like six games, and then season got canceled. But we were able to practice the, for the rest of the year until like April. So we just did practices and just kept on practicing. And then I was able to find ice wherever I could and just really tried to make it worth the make it last like to make it work okay yeah that year was sort of sucky it was a slow year definitely because no game so like i was just waiting for practices and when you're in that like that old you only have two two practice or yeah two practice a week so It was really long weeks because I was just waiting for the practice, waiting for practice, because that's all I looked forward to because you did nothing at home, couldn't see friends. So, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. What's one life lesson a coach has taught you? Uh, I think just to not worry about what other people have to say about you and kind of just make sure that you're in your own little world when you're out on the ice and don't worry about scouts what coaches say what media says whatever anyone says about you you know what you're doing and just got to keep to it uh probably yeah cam cater he taught me a lot of lessons um i'd probably say i got so our provincial year that he was our coach and like in our league finals where you were up one and we lost and i was i was captain that game and I sort of got mad at the boys. He's like, calm down. We all, it's time. Like, it'll happen. It'll happen. We got the team. We got the skill. He can do this. And so I really, he really taught me patience. And yeah, that's what I learned from Cam Cater. Okay. One of my go-to questions here is, uh, if you were having a dream dinner party and you can invite three famous people that are alive, who do you want to bring to your party? Um. I'm going to go off the board here. I'm going to do Lil Baby, a rapper. I love him. He's my favorite rapper right now. I'll go Lil Baby, Carrie Price, and then you say Dead or Alive? Yep. I'll do Kobe Bryant, too. I think it would be pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I think I'd have to go with Michael Jordan. I just want to see what he's all about. Wayne Gretzky and, of course, Connor McDavid. Okay. Three go. Uh, for me, it would be Tupac, Seth yeah. Rogen. Seth Rogen would be my comedian. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think I'd want to sit down with. You can have Wayne Gretzky. I'm going to take Paulina. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it'd be a fun, a fun little uh, get together. Uh, yeah. How do you manage to manage school, hockey, and your friends? Oh, it's hard right now. Like we practice every day almost, and I'm fortunate right now. I only have three classes, so I'm have a pretty light load. But no, you can you have time. Like we practice at three thirty every day. So after after practices, all the boys usually like to get together and do something fun in the room. Or like the other day, we went to eat pizza somewhere. They went to a haunted house, so it was pretty fun. But no, we can all drive now and stuff like that. So it just makes it easier to get around. Yeah. Yeah, for school right now, I don't have the same schedule as Luke. Luke's pretty lucky, but if I have homework or anything, I do it usually before practice. Rather that way, then I can hang out with friends after, so it's a lot easier, so I balance that out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's your personal highlight so far? doesn't necessarily have to be hockey if you have one off the ice. Personal highlight? Oh, boy. I, I want to say getting drafted. I think that was pretty cool. And obviously signing too, which is 
like being the first goalie off the board in that draft and being per- Portland's first pick, I think was pretty cool. So I'd have to say that. Okay. Uh, mine would be going to camp this su- or this August, I guess. Uh, I did pretty good there. Had four goals and I think an assist. And I don't know. I felt I felt good there. I felt it was awesome. I liked it. Yeah, that yeah, was unreal what, place. Yeah, I bet. Uh, what's one of the biggest challenges you see jumping to the dub? Well, I think the speed and the shots and their accuracy was actually probably easier to read than mid AAA is, just because you you know what they're gonna do and you can read them easier. But I think the hardest part was being able to like just read the plays and read what they're going to do because they're all so smart. Like you never really can expect anything. So just being able to read the play when they're coming down, breaking out, stuff like that. And then obviously like guys are a lot bigger and more physical. So you got to be careful with that. Okay. I'd say for me, speed and probably their size. Whenever I went to the corner, like with Zellweger, he owned me in the corners, man. Like, I don't know what what he was on, but every corner he won. It was it was nuts. Okay, that's that's just it. Look how high he went in the NHL draft. Yeah, yeah, and then I was I was surprised when they played him next fish, and we weren't expecting that. But we heard because Everett played three games that week, and we heard they were going to play half their team Friday, half their team Saturday, and their full team Sunday, and they ended up playing their full team Sunday. So it was. It was pretty cool playing against all those guys. Like they had tons of, they had tons of talent. So. Okay, what do you think makes a good captain? Uh, I think someone who can lead by example and kind of take the ropes when they need to. Just be able to hone the boys in, dial them in, make sure everyone has what they need. Just be a good guy. Yeah, he leads on ice, on and off the ice, I guess. Um, He's supportive. He can get the guys going when he needs to. Um, he'll tell you when you're not working hard and tell you to get going. And helps. he helps communicate with coaches too because coaches don't always know what's going on in the room. So definitely helps with that. What do you guys look for in a good coach? Uh, a guy who can really communicate with his players and that builds a good relationship with them away from the – sport like we have a good relationship with our coach and our management and Mormon, so it's pretty sweet like we can joke around and say whatever we want to them talk about our love life our girlfriends or our school or whatever we're doing and they just listen and they always have something good to say so it's pretty fun okay. yeah communication is probably a big one um they're also not going to tell you like they're not going to feed you bull crap they're going to tell you straight on what they want from you and that's what I really like because if coach is going to keep telling me on that, like, yeah, you'll, you'll play, you'll play, but he doesn't play me. Like, I'm going to be like, okay, what's going on here? So that's probably my big key for finding a good coach. Yep. That sounds like a good one. If you were, if you had a time machine right now, what era would you want to go back to or forward? Um, I'd go back to the, yeah, probably I'll go back to the eighties. Yeah. Go back to them. I want to see what my dad thinks so great about that. I don't know. I like the rock music. I like the rock music. Yeah, the rock music is good. I like that. Yeah. Song. Yeah, the rock music and the goalies that couldn't stop a puck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'd yeah, I'd be the next uh <laughs> Carrie Price coming over there. So Yeah. Or go back and be like the first goalie that started the butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden you're like able to stop the puck. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite sports movie? Um, does Benchwarmers count as a sports movie? Sure it does. Yeah, the Benchwarmers, then. That's hilarious. I love watching that movie. Okay. Uh, uh, I have no clue. Uh, I'd probably have to go Benchwarmers. Okay. Uh, how do you wind down after a win? Um, never do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> we... I don't know. We usually just... Well, if we win at home... All the boys usually get together after and watch TV or something like that and just get together. Or if we lose, we'll still get together usually. Just hone down. Just because we usually have a 30 minute rule. So after 30 minutes, just drop it. 
And the bus rides back after a win on the road are always pretty fun too. The boys yeah. like to bring the speaker. The boys like to bring the speaker on the bump, bus and blast it. So it's always pretty fun. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, probably yeah. Usually, sometimes if we're not hanging out, it's usually just hop on the video games that run. Yeah. Just have fun there because, especially for like COVID, you, when you couldn't hang out with friends, you'd play your game and you'd go back on. You'd hop on video games and you'd play until you're done. What's your go-to video game, Chell? That? I'm still into Fortnite, and I've been playing Overwatch 2 lately. Okay. Yeah, I, I like I like NHL, but I, I haven't played Fortnite in a while, but I, the boys are trying to get me back on it, so I might have to hop on later. <laughs> okay. Um, who's your favorite sports hero? Uh, for me, probably Carey Price. Just... Watching that guy play is unbelievable. Like his technicality and his confidence is unreal. Watching him go through the playoffs a couple of years back was, I'm a Habs fan, so it was pretty cool watching that. And then also to hear his story about his mental health and how he came out about that was quite yeah. courageous. So I, I like to see that. I'd probably have to say, I want to go to Bobby Orr. I don't know, my dad's, my dad's a defenseman and I'm a forward and he always loved Bobby Orr. He's like, with the way he played, how he'd always get up and never quit fighting, and how he was young from ki- or always small as a young age, and I even I read his book that he had, and it said that he had a rock in his house, and he'd always shoot pucks against that. Like that's awesome. That's what I love about Bobby Orr. Okay, yeah, I saw that your dad played hockey. He even had like uh, a elite prospects page when I when I, he popped up when I was looking for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, uh, what color is your stick tape and your favorite Gatorade color? I always go white tape. I, I can't use black tape on my blade, but I usually use red grip tape right now because Warman's got a little bit of red in their jerseys, so I like to wear red grip tape. My favorite color, Gatorade? I don't know. Our guy sometimes mixes blue with yellow, so green. Yeah, green yeah. I'll have to go with. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I use white stick tape and red grip tape. So those are my two favorite colors. And then for Gatorade, honestly, I've been mixing red and orange lately and I like that. So I'm going to go with that. I don't know whatever color it makes. It just, I don't know. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. You don't really see many goalies with the anything but white stick tape. No, I think Gru- Philip Grubauer uses black tape, but I think he's the only guy that can rock it. I've tried rocking it a couple times. It's just, it's just not my luck. So. Yeah, we've come across a few over the years of doing this, but yeah, there's definitely not too many. No. Um, what's one word to describe you? Fun, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, would you rather have like your headphones in, or you listen to the team DJ? Well, I'm the team DJ on the team, oh, so that was the next question. I gotta, I, I like to listen. I like to listen to that, but no, usually before the games, like when I'm at home, I have a big speaker at my house, and I always have a shower before I go, and I blast it in the, the bathroom, so almost blow my eardrums out. But it's pretty fun. Okay, uh, what's your uh, go to? Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'd have to go with uh, blasting music. This guy, he creates the. I like his mixes that he creates, Dumpy yeah, Mix, yeah. and I've been listening to those for six months now, and oh, they're my go-to. That was the next question, then it was going to be, what's the playlist look like? Uh, I think for both of us, it's like rap, rock, and then EDM, too. The The boys like the Big Booty Mix, yeah. so that's always yeah. fun to listen to. Yeah, we hear a lot about that Big Booty Mix. Yeah. He... Okay, what's one thing you would change about hockey? I don't know, probably just the stigma around it, like being a hockey player and like going to like being at school, there's teachers out there that are like, they automatically don't like you because you play hockey and hockey players they think are dumb, but you tried to break that stigma. I don't like that because not all hockey players are dumb besides this guy, but. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. I don't, I don't, maybe offsides. Offsides piss me off quite a bit. I don't like that rule. <laughs> yeah. That rule's pissing me off. So you'd rather be able to goal suck? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The rule I always talk about changing, it'd be nice if the goalies were free game 
when they came out of the net. Sorry, Luke. Yeah, but, no, that's fine. Yeah, when you come out of the net, they should be free game. Or I'd also like because in the NHL you're not allowed to play the puck in the corner, right? So no. So I would like to go back to like the '80s and '90s where the goalies could play the puck in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be the two best. I mean, when I was playing beer league, I I, I played beer league. So the during COVID, they took away the offsides. It was just like a it was like a rolling offside wherever the ring at line would come to. So really? it, it was it was pretty sweet. I I got used to that and started liking it. Um, one draft question I've got for you both here. There was a twenty dollar bill on the counter or a hundred dollar bill. In the toilet, what bill are you going for? Oh boy, is the toilet clean? <laughs> we don't know what's in it. <laughs> well, first, first off, I think I check the toilet, see if there's anything in it. If it's just a hundred dollar bill, pull it out. Just get get it over with, pull it out. And I think if there is stuff in it, I'm taking a twenty dollar bill, hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Depends. Like, depends. Am I allowed to use like tongs? Maybe. Maybe I go to the kitchen, grab some tongs <laughs> first, grab the hundred dollar bill. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't know that. if that. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Cole, Cole Perfetti told us that one, and as one of his draft questions that he got, and the reason for it is they want to hear that you you want the hundred dollar bill because they want to see that you can get your hands dirty. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. So yeah, if you ever come across that question again, remember you want to you want to take the hundred dollars to get your hands yeah. dirty, or yeah. take or take them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that one I didn't even think about until somebody brought that up as an option once. Yeah, some teams do rookie idol. If you had to sing one karaoke song, what song are you singing? Oh boy. Maybe Star Chefs by Nicki Minaj. Okay. I think I could hit the vocals pretty good. So <laughs> What's that song for Backstreet Boys? Uh, I Want It That Way. I probably do I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. Just the easiest song. Okay. Another hint for you, if uh, that comes up, there's a song called Tequila. It's like, da 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 tequila. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, only got, it's only got one word. So if you, need a, yeah. if you need the inside scoop, that's a good one. Yeah, well, at our team dinners, like on the road and stuff like that, we used to do a shoe check. I don't know if you know what that is. No, but, what's that? So you put, so someone, you take a piece of food or whatever, and you go and put it on someone's shoe. And you, someone grabs a cup and dings it up like they're doing a toast. And you say, shoe check, shoe check. And if you look down and you have a piece of food on your shoe, you have to do a karaoke and sing a song. Okay. In front of everybody. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've, cool. we've only been on one road trip so far this year, but we, we pulled it off and made a guy sing, I, I want it that way. So it was pretty funny. Okay. Do you have a dream venue you wish to play hockey in one day? T-Mobile in Vegas, 100%. Like, that would be – I that's where I want to play is Vegas. I think that would be crazy, playing there in front of all those people, just loud music. Obviously, it's in Vegas, so there's going to be Fun. fights and stuff like that in the crowd. So – I think it'd be pretty crazy playing there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I've been there for a playoff game, and that, that place sounds crazy. And yeah. the fans love him to play off, so I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, and they always chant at the goalie, you suck when it's their fault. <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. I remember that one. Yeah, I don't even know why they do that or how that ever started. Um, if you were an animal... What would you be? Uh, I don't know. Probably a shark or something like that. Okay. I like to. I like to live underwater. I think it'd be pretty cool and be the king of the ocean too. Okay, then we got not, a not the biggest. Yeah, not the biggest in the ocean, but the king. Okay, I got. I, I, got, I got a question for that coming up here. Go ahead. Okay, I'd probably go lion, just because king of the jungle. I own everything. You know, I own the place. But I guess I really can't attack this guy when he's in the water like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I always go with a dolphin is mine because I look like a dolphin because I'm bald with a nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too many sticks in the face playing hockey growing yeah. up. Yeah. 
They, uh, they have a favorite sports franchise, and it doesn't have to be hockey. Um, I like – I'm a big March Madness guy, like college basketball. So I have to say Gonzaga Bulldogs. I think those guys are unreal every year, and get to watch them play in March is, is always pretty cool. They always do pretty good, besides last year, but that's besides the point. I'd, I'd probably say the Patriots. Uh, I'm not a bandwagon, but my dad's <laughs> been – I'm a Boston fan for everything, so all, all my teams are Boston. But definitely the Patriots and how they won that many Super Bowls, and, and I got to watch all those, which was really cool. Yeah, they – Beat my team, the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People don't forget. We should have ran the ball. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the one thing. If I ever get the chance to interview Marshawn Lynch one day, I gotta really dig into that. You oh, know, that guy. That guy be pretty cool to interview. I think yeah, that guy, he got. Yeah, he, he has some funny stuff to say. So. Yeah, that would just be it. Uh, do you collect anything? Oh. Uh, I, I I don't think I do. No, well, not really. Yeah, we did. One year we did oh, the yeah. Tim Hortons hockey cards. We got pretty serious. Yeah. I would want to say yeah. 2019, 2020. Luke, Luke went and bought like a 50 pack <laughs> online so that he could have more than me while I'm buying packs from the stores or from Tim Hortons still. And I was like, we're cheating here. Like, I thought we're supposed to get it from the Tims. Yeah. <laughs> well, when the Tims runs out of cards, you got to find other ways to go. So. Yeah, it's because you keep circling around the drive through picking up packs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You probably yeah. bought them all out. Yeah. Do you have any hidden talents? Uh, my fingers are super long, so I can, like, just, like, do whatever I want with them. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have any hidden talents. I can't juggle. This guy can juggle, so can't really do anything. Okay. Um... Hopefully, I don't have to edit this. Uh, I don't know if I already asked. You guys have any pregame rituals? Uh, not really rituals, but more routine. Like, get to the rink two hours before warm up, tape my stick, do my ball work, stick handle a ball. As weird as it sounds, goalie stick handling a ball. It's all I always do it. And then we do like a team warm up, and that's really it. Have a shower before the game, usually. Okay. Uh, mine would be take the stick, listen to music, uh, play suey with the guys. I got to come at least like top five or else stuff's ruined. And then <laughs> the kind of the ball, just practicing like in zone stuff, like, like breakout and stuff, just practicing, getting out my head and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. What about go to Selly and chirp? Oh, I always, well, after a win, I always yeah. throw the, throw the stick into the, like the sword into the hatchet and then do the, the belt. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I got you. And then mine would probably be the same thing as Luke, but like it's the stick twirl. Yeah. And then you put it down. And then for chirp, oh, I have awful chirps. I probably would just say, who are you or something. I don't know. Okay. That's yeah. my. I'm out uh, some, of the, some of the chirps are probably – pretty explicit but i think i think one that i got the other day was i heard they're hiring a zamboni driver as you can go get more ice time <laughs> oh nice one yeah. nice one i might have to bring that to beer league yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm out at, i'm out at beer league and when i if i score a goal i hit him with the john cena <laughs> right, right right in there right in the goalie's face it's usually when i get hammered from behind by the big d-man yeah yeah they don't like that um with it being Halloween a couple days ago, what's the best and worst candy? Uh, worst? I've seen people throwing like fruit, like the Welch's, like the fruit snacks, stuff like that. I don't, I don't want any of that stuff. I think, but the best, I don't know. I like rockets, and I like any. I like, I like any candy. Honestly, I have a sweet tooth, so I can't, I can't pick one. Yeah, me too. Probably those crunchy chocolate bars are one of the worst things. And raisins. When you get those, that's that's a bad Halloween. And then <laughs> my favorite chocolate, uh, if I get it, I will keep it to myself. I'll, I won't keep it upstairs. I'll bring it downstairs. It's probably caramel. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know who's handing out raisins on Halloween, but they don't deserve to hand out anymore. No. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> for, for me, the my favorites are the Rockets. Uh, 
Yeah. My, le- my least favorite is probably. Should I don't I should have thought of that before I asked the question. Uh, maybe everybody always gives a hard time to those caramel corn. The it's, candy corn. Like, yeah, or ca- candy yeah. corn. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ones that's like three different colors. It's white, orange, yeah. and brown. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't mind them as much, but I don't care for them that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, how important is people's social media and the stuff that they post on social media? Well, I think obviously in this day and age, social media is a big thing. And like, I know the WHL and now the NHL players, like they want them to start posting more and just start posting more about their life. So people can actually see that they're not all about hockey and they do other things and stuff like that. So I try to, I try to post on Instagram or whatever, but obviously like things like Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram, stuff like that, Facebook, Twitter, you got to watch what you post. And you can't be posting anything dumb or saying anything stupid. So you got to watch that. Yeah, you got to you got to really watch what you say because uh, anything anything you see on the internet, people can edit it and they can make you look bad. And even though you didn't say anything bad, but they'll make you look bad. So you got to be really careful what you put out there. And yeah, that's just it. We like to always bring up that question and talk about that a little bit just to educate the young guys because you never know 15 10 10 15 years down the road some tweet you made is yeah all all of a sudden is going to be brought back up and they're digging for dirt trying to drag you down yeah exactly well that's just one of our guys that we've interviewed he's like the top running back in college football uh he said he doesn't post anything he wouldn't want his grandma to see yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's like me, even for me, the Instagram is like the business, the podcast side, my Snapchat, yeah. my Snapchat's my personal side. I don't really, I keep my closer friends on Snapchat and then yep, Facebook, exactly. you got your Facebook, you got your coworkers and shit. I can't be posting stuff on certain stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. That's why my Snapchat, I put up, hit all the stuff that I'm not supposed to. Got to <laughs> Got a couple of quick response questions for you guys before we wrap her up here. Um, do you know what a Canadian tuxedo is? Yeah, Jean on Jean. Yeah. I have no clue. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I asked you his favorite sports franchise. So, what's your favorite go to breakfast? Eggs and bacon and toast. Pancakes with chocolate chips. Okay, then on that note, if you had to eat pancakes or waffles for the rest of your life, which one are you choosing? Pancakes, 100%. Yeah, pancakes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, a big, I'm not a big fan of waffles, so. Okay. I'll eat what's, them. But. Okay, what's your favorite Halloween costume that you ever was? Uh, scream. That was Darth Vader one day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was pretty cool. Okay. I mean, I just, I just killed it this year. I went as Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw you. I saw that story on your Instagram. That was funny. I had to laugh that one. Yeah, it was good. One five hundred bucks too. So that was nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, one five hundred from my sponsor. Um, do you have a favorite Disney princess? And we know you got one. Oh boy, Moana or Elsa? I'm gonna have to say Cinderella. Okay. Yeah. I always yeah. go with. I always go with Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. It's kind of like my dating life, right? She's Belle. I'm the Beast. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And the longer I I can keep her locked up, the more she'll love me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Do do you have a favorite actor or actress? Adam Um, Sandler. I'll say Will Ferrell. He's yeah. always funny in all of his movies, so I, I like his humor. It's always yeah. It's they always they both they both are really good. Yeah. Um, here's what you a little bit of what you touched on earlier. Would you rather go to deep sea or outer space? Oh boy, outer space. Sea the sea is awful. I hate the ocean. <laughs> I think like going like maybe like down by the crib like the Caribbean and stuff like that, and going deep sea diving. I think that'd be pretty cool. Maybe find some treasure or something like that. Okay. Find a couple ships in the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, favorite time of year, spring, summer, fall, or winter? Winter, probably. Yeah, winter. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty cold in Saskatchewan. We can usually fight through it. Like we, have, I have an ODR in my backyard, so oh. it's always pretty cool to get all the boys over. And I play player, so I have some I have some girls' mitts and a hard shot, so boys can't usually touch the puck when I'm out there. Oh yeah, we got. I'm gonna have to ask the other friends that come by. Yeah, yeah. The uh, that's pretty sweet though. I forget about that. Yeah, all the Vancouver. We don't really get. We get like one or two days of snow a year. I mean, yeah. last, last year we had a big one, and that was like five days. But uh, yeah. I, I, I wish we had an outdoor rink. Yeah, they're always fun. Yeah. Are you a cat or a dog person? I have a I have a cat and a dog at home, but my cat <laughs> is a brat, so I, I have to go dog. Yeah, dog. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. They go good with your Tim Hortons cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, early bird or a night owl? Night owl. Yeah, same here. I usually sleep in on weekends and stay up late when I when I don't have anything the next day. So, okay. Halloween or Canada Day? Oh boy, I'm going Canada Day. No school. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to go with Canada Day too. It's more of a holiday. Yeah. I think Halloween's kind of just something that goes by and it lasts like a week and then you're done. I think Canada Day is just one big party where everyone can celebrate it together. And all across Canada too. Yeah, exactly. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Teleportation. Hmm. Uh to be fast. Like fast man on earth. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I always, I always say I'd like to know what my date's sinking in her head before she leaves me behind. Yeah. Yeah, before she walks out on my dinner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you were a flavor, what flavor would you be? Blue raspberry. Awesome. Probably orange. Safest flavor. Okay. And uh, my answer to that one is I always go with mint because I'm mint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, okay, that's pretty much all the questions I got for you guys. I hit you with some of the fun ones here at the end, and uh, hopefully yeah. everything, was, everything was good. It was good on my end, and I enjoyed having you guys on, so I thank you. Yeah, and, thanks for having us on. It was it was really fun. Thanks for reaching out. Yes. We a, I think we both had a good time with this, had some fun, so yeah. definitely Perfect. good practice in the future. That's for sure, and that's we just like to educate the young guys and try to speak a little wisdom from stuff that we learn along the way as well. We're, we're not really huge, but we, we try. You can, you can yeah, only try. Guys, like looking at your list of people that you've had on, you've had quite a few people. So like Carol Baskin, I think that was yeah. funny. Yeah. The, the resume is amazing on what we have. It's yeah a trickle down effect. It started with uh, Clint Malarchuk was our first one, the, the goalie that slid his neck. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah, yeah. and that led to he gave us Kelly Rudy, and then Kelly Rudy gave us somebody, and then it's boom, 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 yeah. boom. It's been trickling down ever since, and everything's yeah. good. And, and then, of course, when you get to Portland, I uh, will be seeing you and running into you in Vancouver when you come up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 